pretty serious stuff. Yeah. Oh. So in here you're looking at one of the, the angled blades and one of the turbines. Uh, there's about, uh, in this particular turbine, there's about 16 of those uh, angled blades that have stamped out in the, both the big parts and also through the center part. And that's, those, those are the things that are turned by the steam pressure and drive the propeller shaft. So this whole assembly over here, made up of two turbines, is the number one main engine for the ship. These four engines are all the same. Over behind it, under those silver springs and gears, there's a much smaller turbine. That's called a high-pressure turbine. And uh, that was, when steam is made on the other side of that bulkhead or wall there, there's a boiler room there that has two furnaces that supply this, uh, this, this engine with steam. And uh, the steam goes around the main pipe, is the vertical one coming down behind those springs. And the first uh, steam coming in enters there, and it goes up and over, and then crosses over down into the middle of this turbine. This one has uh, blades in both ends of it, uh, separated. And what happens is you're using something called superheated steam. And the first pass through the first furnace in there, uh, the steam only heats up to about uh, four or 500 degrees Fahrenheit. It's not hot enough to drive all the moisture out. So we don't want to put any of that first pass steam in these turbines. The drops of water at 600 pounds pressure, which is the pressure the steam comes at, would erode those turbine blades and you'd be out of business in a week. So, uh, so that you see some of that uh, first steam which still has water mixed in for some simple steam systems on the ship, like cleaning clothes and cooking food. And they use maybe 10% of the steam made in that uh, furnace for that stuff. And then, but the rest of it goes through a second set of heaters inside the same boiler and the same furnace. And that takes it up to, uh, keeps it at 600 pounds per square inch pressure, takes the temperature up to about 800 degrees Fahrenheit. And that drives all of the, the uh, moisture out of it. So what comes in here is bone dry steam at uh, 600 pounds pressure and maybe 800 degrees temperature goes through the first turbine, then it automatically crosses over, comes down to this one. And these turbines are designed so that whatever your speed setting is, half of it is developed in each turbine, even though this, the uh, first one is much smaller than this one. That one has about six or seven 30-inch uh, uh, diameter turbines in it. This one has about 14 or 15 six-foot diameter turbines. So it's, it's a much bigger, and even though the steam pressure is much lower, they both produce the same amount of horsepower. So if you're traveling at a certain speed, it's mixed evenly between these two turbines. And they can be running at uh, slightly different speeds, uh, say 150 or, uh, RPM per minute different. Uh, the problem they had with these is when these turbines are running and the ship's going at its slowest speeds, which are about 13 to 15 knots, these turbines are turning about 2,500 revolutions per minute. At maximum speed, they're turning well over 5,000. There's no way you could turn the big heavy propeller shaft that goes all the way to the rear of the ship at thousands of RPM. It would jump out of its bearings and tear the whole ship apart. Let me uh, get you a picture of that. This one, this one. This uh, propeller shaft that goes to the back of the ship with propellers are, is 20 inches in diameter. The center is always bored out, so it's about a five inch thickness out here. And uh, it's uh, from up to here, it's uh, 283 feet long, almost uh, the length of a football field. So with these big heavy shafts turning, you got, you got to be careful. You can't turn them at thousands of RPM, especially when you're going at top speed and the shaft is turning you know, as much as uh, 5,500 revolutions per minute. So what they did 
They have this big gray box behind us that's full of gears, and it takes the two shafts from the two turbines and maybe turn it at 100 RPM different speeds. And it converts that into one out, outgoing rotary motion, and the top speed on that shaft going out is 260 revolutions per minute. And that would push the ship through the water, the speeds up to 33 knots, 38 miles an hour. <laughs> so this is, this is all gear? Yeah, that's the reduction gear. And the chief engineer of the ship was told me, he said, if we could ever get this ship running again, he's convinced those reduction gears would run flawlessly for another 70 years. But we'll never get it running. There's too many pipes were cut up, taken off, and we never get the, the steam pipes to hold pressure again. It's a, parts were torn off to use on other ships as this one went out of service. And, you know, it would be cheaper to build a new ship than to try to repair this one. Uh, right behind us there is a huge uh, electric uh, control panel. That's because over here we have an electric generator. If there's an armature inside that square cabinet. It's driven by the same superheated steam that we put in the engines that goes through that part over there. The, uh, the part, the, the low rectangular part with all the red things attached to it is the reduction gear. And it's there for the same reason to change the thousands of RPM the turbines want to run down to uh, 260 or so. So that, uh, that the electric generator, the, the uh, generator magnet inside, uh, and these, there's four of these on the ship. Each one produces, uh, let's see, it's one and a half megawatts of power at 400 volts uh, AC. 416, <laughs> three phase. And, uh, <laughs> And there's two emergency generators backing these up that are just diesel engines. They're actually the engine that, the same engine that would run a diesel train on the railroad. They're great big things. And if one of these goes out of service, one of those actually kicks in. One up front will keep all the critical electricity parts needed up there. And there's another one way in the back of the ship that will, will cover that area. For, and they can move that from one area to the other as they need. So they thought of a lot of things.